come on in, pull up a chair, and take a load off, because today I will be reviewing the core rulebook for Symborum from Free League Publishing. Is this role-playing game a perfect choice for those out there who are looking for kind of a dark fairy tale setting? Or should you close the book on even considering adding Symborum to your collection? Well, you're going to find out right after this. Howdy, 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 gang. Welcome once again to the Duct Tape Studios. I'm Jeff McAleer, your host here at the Gaming Gang channel. As I mentioned in the open, I am going to be reviewing the core book for Symborum in just a moment. But first, I do want to remind you, if you like this video, by all means, please give it a quick thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And if you do subscribe, ding that bell, because it'll not only let you know when I upload videos such as this review, i also tell you when my live stream, The Gaming Gang Dispatch, airs live right here on YouTube, Monday through Thursday nights, as I bring you the latest in tabletop gaming news. Of course, when you're not watching videos on The Gaming Gang channel, be sure to visit thegaminggang.com. For all latest in gaming news, reviews, and a whole lot more, get your geek on at thegaminggang.com. Today, I am diving into Symborum which I think that's how it's pronounced. I'm not positive that's how it's pronounced because I have heard it pronounced in a variety of different ways. But I can tell you that it is from Free League Publishing. It's written by Matthias Johnson and Matthias Lilja with artwork from Martin Grip and Johan Nuer. The 264-page hardcover is available for an MSRP of $53.99. You can also get it in PDF over at Drive Through RPG for $24.99. Do you want to mention that the Gaming Gang is affiliated with the One Bookshelf sites? So if you are going to go over to, say, Drive Through RPG, please stop by thegaminggang.com first. Click on one of our banner ads. That way, if you do happen to make a purchase, we get a little portion of that sale. And it really does help keep the Gaming Gang channel and website around so let's swing on over to the other camera because here i have symborum the core rule book from free league publishing should mention before we dive on in that the fine folks over at free league were kind enough to send me this review copy but neither i nor anyone else affiliated with the gaming gang has received any sort of compensation for me to share my thoughts about this book. It's important that you know that. All right, we're going to be diving in in just a second. Let's look at the back real quick. I'm not going to read all of this, but I do want to point out this was uh, nominated for uh, uh, any awards uh, as well as Origins Awards. And this originally came out in 2015. I believe it was in Swedish at that time. It has uh, been out in English for a while. This, I believe, is the third edition of the game. And I believe this came out, this edition came out in 2019. So, Symborum invites you to join in the adventure. Explore the vast forest of Devakar in the hunt for treasure, lost wisdom, and fame. Visit the barbarian clans to trade or to plunder their treasuries. Establish a base of power among princes guilds or rebellious refugees in the capital city of Indaros or survive encounters with arc trolls, dark-minded blight beasts, and undead warlords. But whatever you do, never ignore the warnings spoken by the wardens of the forest. Tread carefully and do not disturb the ruins of old, for the dark deep of Devakar is about to awaken. Ooh. <laughs> All right, let's jump on in. So it usually goes without saying, whenever I'm talking about a free league publishing release, that the quality is just top-notch. Really, really nice. We've got 
our good old European bookmarks as we normally will see. The uh, paper quality is very nicely done. It's got a little bit of a sheen to it as well. Artwork is fantastic. You're going to see that also. So we're going to jump on in. Here we've got some, uh, some shout-outs to Kickstarter supporters, backers from Kickstarter. So we're going to start off the, the whole early section of the book, approximately off the top of my head, I think it's 70 pages, is really going to be setting information. So we get it early on. We get the, you know, the typical what's a role playing game. Who's the game master? What do the players do? I will mention that this uses a D20 resol action resolution. I almost said D20 system, but it's really not a D20 system as most people would associate with Dungeons and Dragons. These are not the same sort of roles as you would have in a Dungeons and Dragons D20 role. But this game does not utilize the Year Zero engine from Free League Publishing, which Forgotten uh, Lands, I'm sorry, Forbidden Lands utilizes. So does Tales from the Loop. And of course, Mutant Year Zero. So early on, we're going to get some background information about the setting itself. And as I mentioned in my open, this is kind of a darker sort of setting. This isn't a grim dark setting, in my opinion, but this is a darker setting. <clears throat> and it feels to me more like a kind of like a low fantasy grim fairy tales sort of setting as opposed to what you'll normally run across in yeah, the, the big selling role-playing games out there, the Dungeons and Dragons, the, the Pathfinders. This is far less magic. Uh, not, not to say that there isn't magic, but this is not a world where everyone knows magic. And essentially what's been going on is civilization has won the war against dark forces, but they've pretty much <laughs> been almost annihilated. So there are only a uh, few outposts of, I, would, I was going to say humanity, but there are various different cultures that are involved that are non-human that are available to play as characters as well but uh, let's just say the good guys were almost wiped out and they're now looking to kind of reclaim I don't want to say civilization because there are small outposts of civilization but they're trying to reclaim the world in essence and one of the cool aspects I thought of Symborum is it's not trying to spoon feed you the entire world that is out there it is just a small portion of the game world that you're focusing on so in daros once again i'm just making up these pronunciations <laughs> as i go this is the capital this is kind of the capital city that's left it uh, borders on this huge dark forest that the adventurers We'll, uh, we'll have many adventures in. And uh, kind of cool where it's uh, the discussion about the Dark Forest that the, the player characters actually have to have like licenses to be able to explore and uh, try to, you know, try to raid for treasure and, and things like that. I will mention that there are huge areas about the setting that are not filled in. And I would have liked to have had a lot more background information. Now it's not, it's not terrible or anything like that. In fact, I, I think the, the main thing is it really whets my appetite to learn more about the world, the setting that's out there. And that is a good thing, but I wish there had been a bit more. Now I, I will point out, that Free League Publishing has really supported Symborum extremely well. 
In fact, just off the top of my head, I honestly think alongside Mutant, this is probably their most supported game setting, game system that they've got. And as you can see, the artwork is very, very cool. Sometimes the artwork doesn't necessarily jive with what you're reading on the page. It doesn't happen too often, but especially when we're kind of looking through some of the, the areas uh, as you're reading, it's kind of like, well, that's not exactly how this comes across. I do believe that this game is based upon this artwork and not necessarily to the same degree as, say, uh, Tales from the Loop. I don't think we have that much uh, tie-in together as we do with uh, Simon Stallenhog's uh, Tales from the Loop, but this game, you can obviously see, has been inspired by this artwork, and the artwork is very, very cool. So creating a character, essentially you're looking at, you're going to have eight attributes, ranging anywhere from 5 to 15 as a score. So for the most part, what you're going to be looking to do is you're going to have tasks that you'll be trying to achieve and to do so you're going to roll a d20 and you're looking to roll equal to or less than the associated attribute that is in essence much of what's going on in this game and as far as creating the character there's a couple of ways you can go about it you're not gonna actually roll them up you can either assign certain values to the attributes however you want. And I'll go back here so you can see what we're looking at. Here we go. So we've got the, the uh, attributes. We've got the archetypes. We've got kind of like subclasses as well. We've got talents. So there's a, there's a lot to really custom craft your player character. So I have to say that's pretty cool. But for an example here, so if you're going to do the distribution, you've got 5, 7, 9, 10, 10, 11, 13, and 15. So you'll have a 15, which is really good. But you're also going to have 5, 7, 9, which some people are really into, you know, the min-maxing of character creation may not like. But these low scores also do add to the role-playing elements of your character. It's actually pretty cool. There's also a, a point buy that you can utilize as well. So I'll show you the attributes in a moment. I'll go into a little more detail. I mean, it's, it's kind of traditional role-playing game attributes, just named a little bit differently. But looking at the archetypes, so we've got the warrior, and then we're going to say, okay, so here's some, some subclasses. So a duelist, the captain, a cell sword, the knight. Once again, I think this artwork is awesome. The mystic. So if you're looking for a magic user, we've got the sorcerer, the theater, I, I think. <laughs> I, I don't know. I guess that's how it's pronounced. The wizard, the self-taught mystic. Then we've got the rogue. So we've got witch hunter, thug, ranger, treasure hunter. And then you're going to be able to customize them much more based on your attributes. So one of the things that I thought was, was pretty cool is when you take a look at these, these subclasses, I guess we'll say, or sub archetypes that you're, you're looking at the like the traits that your characters will have. You're not going to have tons and tons of different traits. You're not going to have tons and tons of bonuses for your various different attributes. But if you want to, say, be a witch hunter, you would have to have resolute 13 or higher, cunning or accurate 11 or higher. So accurate is... Uh, essentially mainly a combat attribute 
So is Quick. Quick is also a, a combat attribute as well. So we're going to get into here. So you're with the attributes, you've got accurate, as I mentioned, it's, it's a lot kind of pointed towards combat. Cunning, discreet, persuasive, quick, resolute, strong, and vigilant. And then we have some secondary attributes as well, such as toughness, pain threshold, defense, which is just kind of... Um, when your when your characters are hit in combat, it's going to kind of stop damage. That's the, one of the aspects uh, of combat that's pretty cool. We'll talk about that a little bit. We have success tests, and then you might with these success tests, you might have a a difficulty number that you're looking to overcome. So you're looking at the modifiers plus or minus to the die roll because remember you're rolling equal to or under. So if you have a 15, you've got a 75% chance of success on a 20-sided die roll for most uh, tasks that are affiliated with that attribute. So one of the things I like with the attributes as well is that they kind of play off each other a little bit. So you've got like... Accurate and quick, cunning, discreet, persuasive, resolute, strength and vigilant. Don't really play off each other, but um, I thought that was kind of cool. I kind of, as opposed to just being your usual, okay, strength, dexterity, constitution, wisdom, intelligence, charisma. So then we have the various different races, the different cultures. Got to point out. There are elves and dwarves, and you can't play one. <laughs> womp, womp, womp. You can play a changeling. So as far as... Now, I know as far as, like, Irish mythology, you know, Irish fairy tales, there was always the story of the, cha the changeling, where the elves come and steal a baby and replace it with... A, a false child, the whole changeling thing. So the changeling is actually the uh, the human child that has been stolen from his crib, grown up. <laughs> kind of cool. We got ogres. We got goblins. So very cool. Of course, you got humans as well. Then we have traits. So with the traits here, you're not going to have tons of these. You're probably going to only have one, maybe two. Some of these traits are actually associated with your culture. So human or ogre or goblin. Some of these you don't have to take, but it's strongly suggested that you do take it. For an example, like shapeshifter. That would be the changeling. Then we have abilities, kind of like skills. So we've got a few of these. Once again, these are just simply going to kind of customize your character. This is a very rules light system, to be honest with you. <laughs> it, it is. And we'll see when we get to playing the game, the rules to playing the game, that it is very, very rules light. So we do also have different levels with these as well. So we've got novice, adept, as well as master. We have that with the magic as well. We'll get into magic. So one of the aspects of the game, too, is we have the magic spells. All the characters have what's known as shadow. And shadow is essentially, you know, the evil that, that grows within. The, I guess we'll say the darkness that grows within. And if you are going to be a magic user, that is something that you're going to have to worry about. It's corruption. If you are familiar with games like Warhammer Fantasy Roleplay, the corruption of chaos, kind of kind of similar vein. So one one part that I was kind of another I was gonna say another aspect that I wish we had had more details about is this corruption. Uh, even Dungeon Crawl Classics has the whole premise of you know you, you fail your your magic rolls and uh, you can be corrupted. You can have 
you know, feedback from the spells. Bad things can happen. I actually like that. I think that's pretty cool. We're going to talk about mystical powers once again. We're going to have different areas of expertise and tells you, okay, so what, what does this do if you're a novice, an adept, or master, just like we saw previously? And we've got a good number of them. So it's going to also tell you what do you need, what does uh, the magic user need, uh, what kind of school does this fall into. It's not necessarily really a school. They don't call it a school. It's more like um, an area of study. Well, we've got a good, good amount. Then we also have some rituals as well, which, of course, are going to take a bit longer to cast. So we've got witchcraft. We've got wizardry. We have theurgy. I think that's how it's pronounced. <laughs> so... So wait a second, you're probably sitting there thinking, Jeff, when are we going to get to the rules of the game? They're coming. So great equipment. We've got a good amount of uh, information on the equipment. Armor, uh, quickness and armor in this game is actually going to eliminate damage that you take. When we get into how to play the game, I will uh, talk about, which we've got right here, talk about one aspect of Symborum that... I personally like in role-playing games. I think some folks out there may not care for it, especially the game masters out there. Me, I like it. And that is your players are going to roll all the dice. You are not going to be rolling dice against the players. I do, I do like that. I have to say that from my experience in practice, the game master does roll some dice, especially if you're you're creating random tables and and things like that. Yes, you're you're going to be rolling some dice, but as far as like the combat, you will not. So essentially, what happens is when the player character attacks, they're going to roll as an attack, and essentially, it's it's their accuracy versus the defender's quick. And of course, your initiative in your combat is based on quick, as well as weapons. Weapons add to that as well. So we've got damage and healing. We've got toughness. We've got an interesting concept, which is pain threshold. So it is, uh, it's relatively, I shouldn't say relatively easy, but if a character or even NPC has their pain threshold, uh, overwhelmed then bad things start to happen so it, it's very possible to just kind of go into a spiral that you're you're get or even like either the player character or npc is getting hit and so essentially if you if the pain threshold is overcome the damage uh the attacker gets another attack or they can knock the uh, target down. So, like I said, it it's uh, taking a look at the rules, the way they're set up would make you think that combat might kind of drag, but it doesn't. But combat is very lethal. I like lethal combat, to be honest. <laughs> I, you know, I, I am not a big fan of, oh, well, you know, so this... Uh, so this fight is moving into its 20th round. <laughs> it's like, oh, and they've broken a sweat. So we get a little bit of a quick guide to combat as well. And of course, it's it's along the lines of, you know, you, you have actions you can take in combat. The crunchiest part of this game, mechanically, is combat. Now, it is possible that player characters will create their own, I should say, players will create their player characters just all focused on combat. It is very easy to do that with the design of the mechanics here. I gotta be honest, as a game master, try to not let your, your players do that. Because it, it will get, personally, I would think that build would be very boring, but, you know, some people, it's all about the fighting. Not me. 
But I do like the the combat system. Combat system is pretty cool. So we get into the game master guide. Just going to go into uh, some some deeper explanations of how the rules work. Once again, like I said, they're very very easy. Talking about problem solving, combat, time within the game. This is another another role playing game that is is kind of scene based which is something that we see with modern role playing games that we there are a lot of games that are kind of scene based as opposed to just uh you know sandbox so going through some of this we've got some campaign rules which i thought were pretty cool we've got discussion about adventures we will have an introductory adventure in this as well We've got a, a short bestiary. I think there's uh, almost, I remember right, I think there's almost 40 monsters overall. But they are pretty cool. And once again, like I said, at least to me, this game has a real kind of dark fairy tale vibe to it to me. This is It's not your typical, oh, grim dark, oh, you know, civilizations on you know on its last legs no they they've defeated the big baddie it's just they've been left in pretty poor shape so we've got the various different uh monsters as well as kind of npc types that you'll run across and they're broken up into various different categories as well what I would love to learn more about is the uh, the forest that is uh, like beyond the capital, which is the capital's kind of on the on the edge of the forest, and I think I think that's covered in more detail in another book. So there's there's like adventure books. There's more supplements for this as well. I I can't stress enough that this has been supported by Free League Publishing really really well. So here we've got the adventure. We'll kind of zip through this a little, a little bit. It's uh, once again, there's basically some different scenes. It's like nine or ten. We also have uh, pre-generated characters as well, and we've got a variety of pre-generated characters for the players as well. And then we get into the adventure itself. As you can see, it's it even tells you this is scene. 3.1 Troll of the Mountains. And then we've got an appendix. Some locations. Our index, and that is it. Player character sheets. Two sides. And that is Symborum, which is from Free League Publishing. Let's swing out over to the other camera. I will share my final thoughts about Symborum and give it a review score. I like this book. I can see why it was nominated for various different awards. As I've gotten older, I have gotten away from really crunchy rules. It's just how I am. I, if I'm, this is as a game master. If I'm running a game, I don't want my entire four-hour session or longer, because I tend to have longer game sessions than most people. I don't want it all devoted to one or two combats. To me, it's not very exciting. Not to say that I don't like having good combat, having some action in my games. It's just I don't want them to, you know, take up an hour, two hours each combat. This that's something that Symborum alleviates it has detailed combat but it's not going to continually just grind on and on and on as far as the rest of the mechanics to the system very very easy very easy as a player very easy as a game master once again i also like the fact that all the die rolling for the most part i know like i said when i talked about it that in in essence, in when you're actually playing this as a game master, you're going to roll some dice 
if you want some random things to happen, as opposed to just asking your player, oh, do me a favor, roll a d6. I don't, I don't like doing that because I don't like them knowing, oh, what am I, I'm rolling a d6 for something. What am I rolling it for? Something must be up. What's up? What's going on? Why did you want me to roll that d6? Whereas I could just go, mm -hmm, okay, and just, you know, moving right along. But I do like the fact that as far as the, the rules presented, all the dice rolling is player facing. The players are going to do it. Once again, that, you know, sometimes players get upset when the game master says, okay, well, I just rolled whatever, and this has happened. You don't have to worry about that anymore. It's the players all making the die rolls. It's all their fault. So I do like that. And then we've seen more and more of that recently with, with role-playing game designs. So I do think that's pretty cool as well. Love the artwork. I think the artwork is very cool. I like the setting. It really has whet my appetite to learn more about this game world. Like I said, it's it's very cool. It's not your typical high fantasy, but it's also not your typical sword and sorcery either. It is, in essence, a medieval era with magic and monsters but not high fantasy over the top. So I do like that as well. I think it, it stands out. I wish there was more information about it in the book, but it's a role-playing game. They're not going to pack everything I need to know in the book. They got other supplements as well. All in all, I really do highly recommend Symborum to those out there who are looking for lighter game mechanics but still some crunch as far as combat goes. A dark fairy tale kind of setting, not necessarily grim dark, but it is a darker kind of setting. And once again, this game has a lot of support from Free League Publishing. Some things uh, I might not be super keen on is that uh, there were some areas, as I mentioned, I wish there was more detail. There were some things like, especially like the corruption, the magical corruption, your shadow. It wasn't really explained all that well. Kind of, it was kind of hand waved. I'd like to uh, to have a little more of that. Um, some other aspects, so like like the ogres and the goblins, are kind of like second class citizens as far as civilization goes. I would have liked a little more information about that because it's. It's mentioned, but it's not really gone into a lot of detail about. So that is something as well. And I would have liked to have kind of seen more emphasis on the what, what essentially is the main construct and main conflict of Symborum, civilization versus the forest. Would have liked to have seen a bit more of that as well. But once again, I'm, I'm pretty sure that's going to be tackled in other supplements as well. On a scale of 1 to 10, I give Symborum a very high recommended 9 out of 10. I like it that much. Few things could, could use a little work, but yeah, really cool. Really cool. Really enjoyed it. Hopefully, I have an opportunity to check out more stuff for Symborum from Free League Publishing. All right, that is it for this time out. If you like this video, by all means, please give it a quick thumbs up. Subscribe to the Gaming Gang channel if you haven't, and ding that bell if you subscribe, because it'll not only let you know when I upload reviews such as this and other videos, it'll also tell you when my live stream, the Gaming Gang Dispatch, airs Monday through Thursday nights right here on YouTube as I bring you the latest in tabletop gaming news. Of course, when you're not watching videos on the Gaming Gang channel, be sure to visit thegaminggang.com. For all the latest in gaming news, reviews, and a whole lot more, get your geek on at thegaminggang.com. Thank you very much for joining me once again. And as I wrap up all of my videos during this never-ending pandemic, I certainly do hope all of you out there are being smart and staying safe.
Oh, you're still here. Well, if that's the case, if you'd like to subscribe to the Gaming Gang channel, by all means, click right here. And if you'd like to check out one of our recent live streams, click right up top. And if you want to roll the dice and see what the algorithm for YouTube recommends, click right here. And of course, thank you once again for watching. And gang, please stay safe and wear a mask.